Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India can become world's skilled capital and growth engine, says PM Modi at Diaspora event. Pakistan launches $8 billion flood aid appeal at UN conference. And Nepal makes COVID negative report mandatory for all international passengers. And now for all the details, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday said that India has the capability to be world's skilled capital and growth engine as he inaugurated the 17th Overseas Indian Day Convention in Indore City. He said the members of the Indian diaspora were the brand ambassadors of the country and should amplify its message. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday said that India has the capability of becoming world's skilled capital and growth engine as he inaugurated the 17th Pravasi Bharati Divas or Overseas Indians Day Convention in central Indore city. Speaking at the event along with chief guests Guyana President Mohammad Irfan Ali and Suriname President Chandrika Prasad Santokhi, Modi said members of the Indian diaspora were the brand ambassadors of the country and their role was to promote Make in India, Yoga, Ayurveda, Cottage Industry and Handicrafts. Today, we have to become the knowledge center of the world, but also the skill capital of the world. Today, we have a great population of the world. We have a great population of the world. स्किल भी हैं, वैल्यूज भी हैं, और काम करने के लिए जरूरी जज्बा और ईमानदारी भी है। More than 3,500 diaspora members from 70 countries have registered for the event, which marks the contribution of the overseas Indian community towards the development of their homeland. It commemorates the arrival of Mahatma Gandhi in Mumbai from South Africa on that day in 1915. Well, the district administration in India's Joshimat has declared the sinking hill town as disaster prone after cracks appeared in homes and roads, which has forced authorities to evacuate scores of families. For years, experts have warned that large scale construction work in and around Joshimat could lead to land subsidence. The district administration of India's northern hill state of Uttarakhand have declared the sinking town of Joshimat disaster prone after cracks appeared in home and roads, making dirty water gush through the crevices. Residents of the sinking town were seen relocating with their belongings, while rescue workers and municipal employees came to their aid to fasten the process. Emeritus scientists of the Indian National Science Academy, D.M. Banerjee, said on Sunday, that the buildings of the town have all slipped from the higher ranges and anything which has slipped from its original position will always be unstable. The whole mountain range, wherever the mount house, house they are actually not in situ. They are not in position near the position, but they have all slipped from the higher, higher ranges. So obviously anything which has slipped from its original position will be always unstable. So Right in the beginning, when they started people living into that, they were living in a zone which is unstable. And it should not have grown like a big city or big town the way it has become. Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami said the people need to work as a team to save Joshimat, adding that Prime Minister Narendra Modi is keeping an eye on the developments, including steps for rehabilitation of affected residents. सब को मिलजुल कर जो सीमट को बचाने का समय है, सब लोग एक टीम के रूप में काम करें, सभी लोग मिलकर सरकार है, सामाजिक संगठन है, राजनीतिक संगठन है, हमारी सब की पहली प्राथमिकता है कि जो सीमट शहर बसना चाहिए और लोगों की जानमाल की सुरक्षा होनी चाहिए, जहां 
सभी लोगों से मैंने मिलकर भी वैसे भी अनुरोध किया है और लोग लगे भी हैं सब लोग अब इस काम पर लग गए हैं फॉर इयर्स एक्सपर्ट्स हैव वॉन दैट लार्ज स्केल कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्क इंक्लूडिंग हाइड्रो पावर प्रोजेक्ट इन एंड अराउंड जोशी मठ कुड लीड टू लैंड सबसाइडेंस दिंकिंग और सेटलिंग ऑफ द ग्राउंड सर्फेस Joshi Math a town of around 17000 people is a gateway to pilgrimages to Hindu and Sikh shrines and is popular with tourists looking to trek parts of the Himalayas In news from Pakistan Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Monday appealed for 8 billion US dollars from world donors at a UN conference to rebuild the country that was swamped in devastating floods last September The United States said it would provide an additional 100 million dollars in funding while French president said Paris was ready to support Pakistan in its talks with financial institutions Pakistan Prime Minister on Monday said Pakistan was in dire need of 8 billion US dollars from world donors for the next 3 years to rebuild the country that was swamped in floods last September. Speaking at a UN led donor conference in Geneva, Sharif said international community solidarity and long term support to Pakistan at this critical juncture would make the difference between staying unprepared or facing the future with renewed hope and aspirations. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres also called for massive support to help Pakistan with its 16 billion dollars rebuilding effort saying the country has been the victim of climate chaos and the global financial system Our funding gap for minimum recovery is 8 billion dollars and will be needed over the span of the next 3 years Excellencies it is clear that Pakistan's ability to recover from the colossal flood disaster to restore critical infrastructure and revive rapid economic growth will hinge substantially on the speed of these actions french president emmanuel macron said paris was ready to support pakistan in its talks with financial institutions A senior official from the US Development Agency US Aid said Washington would provide an additional 100 million dollars while Islamic Development Bank pledged 4.2 billion dollars. The floods blamed on climate change dealt a severe blow to Pakistan's already strained economy while displacing some 8 million people and killing at least 1700. Moving on the police chief of Pakistan's Karachi city has admitted street crime is the biggest problem faced by the city's law enforcement authorities residents have complained efforts by the police have not been satisfactory demanding that strict measures need to be implemented by the government Police chief of Pakistan's Karachi Javed Alam Odo has admitted that unabated street crime is the biggest problem for the city the country's economic hub adding that around 36000 criminals involved in different crimes were arrested in 2022 odo said most of the street crimes were identified through cctv cameras and asked the residents to install surveillance cameras to aid the law enforcement authorities to curb the menace of street crimes however the locals have complained that the efforts by police are not satisfactory while there is a rise in crimes police is unable to keep a check a local said Residents demanded strict measures need to be implemented by the government as they even fear using mobile phones in public believing they may get snatched Jo bhi ho hamari jo Sindh police hai ye thodi mehnat kare inke upar crime ko roke jaraim ko roke hum to yahi kehna chahte hain hum garib log hai hum kya karenge Aaj milegi roti to kal jaake khayenge ghar pe nahi milegi to kahan se khayenge jo milegi wo bhi chheen ke le jate hain ye log to hamare bacche hamare maa baap kya karenge wo bhookhe hi marenge According to a report by the Citizen Police Liaison Committee a total of 7576 street crime incidents were reported while 2260 mobile phones were snatched at gunpoint last October alone experts believe the task of maintaining law and order has been further compounded by a non-functional criminal justice system In news from Afghanistan the top UN diplomat in Afghanistan met Taliban appointed education minister Nida Mohammad Nadeem in Kabul this past weekend and urged the urgent lifting of the ban on female education and work for aid agencies since seizing power last August the Taliban has imposed policies severely restricting basic rights particularly those of women and girls 
the top UN diplomat in Afghanistan, Port Sil Marcus, met Taliban-appointed Education Minister Neda Mohammad Nadeem in Kabul this past weekend and called for the urgent lifting of the ban on female education and work for aid agencies. United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan on Twitter confirmed the meeting with Nadeem and other Taliban officials and said that Afghanistan is entering a new period of crisis and the Taliban ban on female education and work for aid agencies will harm all Afghans. Last month, the Taliban imposed restriction on female higher education and a ban on women from working in humanitarian, non-governmental organizations. Human rights experts and members of the international community have described these measures as a major blow to vulnerable communities, women, children and the entire country. The Taliban took over Afghanistan in August 2021 and have since then imposed policies severely restricting basic rights, particularly those of women and girls. No country has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. In news from Nepal, Nepal has again made the COVID-19 negative reports mandatory for all international passengers, the country's national flag carrier announced on Sunday. Issuing a notice, Nepal Airlines said that international passengers must present a negative COVID-19 RT-PCR report upon arrival. The decision came in wake of the rising COVID-19 cases worldwide, especially in neighboring China. Closed for over two years since the pandemic, Nepal opened its doors for tourists in March last year, removed Moving all pre-arrival testing requirements for fully vaccinated travellers in a bid to recharge its crucial tourism industry. The Himalayan nation currently has 21 active cases of coronavirus. And kite flyers from across the globe are taking part in the week-long International Kite Festival being held in India's Gujarat state after two years of COVID-induced hiatus. The annual event commemorates the days in the Hindu calendar leading to Makar Sakranti when winter starts to give way to summer. Kite flyers from across the globe throng India's western Ahmedabad city on Sunday to participate in the International Kite Festival, which is being held after a two-year COVID-19-induced hiatus. The sky above Ahmedabad was filled with giant, quirky kites of different shapes and colors. Around 125 kite flyers from 68 countries are taking part in the week-long festival with the G20 theme of One Earth, One Family, One Future. India currently holds the G20, a group of 20 presidency. This festival is one of the biggest in the world and uh, I meet my friends from many countries and I get to share my kites and my art with many people. Participants expressed excitement and joy as the festival will take place in various locations across Gujarat until January 14th. It's a very uh, big uh, celebrate, uh, have a good uh, color and a lot of different people and I think that it's uh, one of the best festival in the world because we go in different festivals but uh, maybe in India more joy, more fun, more color. Yes, it's very pretty. The event commemorates the day in the Hindu calendar leading to Makar Sankranti where winter starts to give way to summer. Bhagat Sankranti will follow January 14th of this year. In Gujarat, this spirit is known as Uttarayan and is celebrated by flying kites with great zeal and joy. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.